studio is Max Tech down from San Francisco. Good morning, sir. How are you, Max? Good morning, Scott. I'm good. Good. So what's going on in the tech world these days? Well, um, I'd like to start out with a uh, You Should Know. A You Should Know. And uh, my You Should Know uh, is about the Beats headphones. And um, after some intense research and scouting of the Internet, I have come to a conclusion that when you turn Beats off, it's not that the actual device is turned off. Um, it's they set the EQ to, or the equalizer to go to a bad present sound. So what happens is it creates the illusion that when you turn the little beat option on, like I noticed you used to have beats, um, as soon as you flick the little switch on, it sounds better. It's not because the, the, like the soundproofing or anything's being turned on. It's literally a switch just activates a better sounding EQ, which makes people think like, Oh, beats sound great, but in all fairness, Apple just paid $3 billion for looks. But. <laughs> hey, Max, great Alrighty. stuff, man. Safe travels, Thank too. Good seeing really. you. Thanks, Good. man. I played this club in El Centro one night, and I ended up sleeping on the linoleum floor. At some point, I got up and started writing a song. I wrote a bunch of stuff until I finally got a good line. And the next day, I found myself at a street fair in Old Town, and I saw this beautiful girl wearing these turquoise earrings. I knew right then I had to put her in the song. Into the studio now. We're making a very rough transition. Miss Jill Harvey, our lifestyle, healthy lifestyle. Healthy, healthy with her, lifestyle. With her personal journal. Coach, with her personal journal. Here to talk to us about something that stresses all of us out. Yeah, Ooh. stress management. Stress. stress. Well, first of all, good morning. How are you good doing? Morning. Are you feeling a little stressed at all? Not at all, but I noticed you guys were this morning. Well, uh, you know, right. mine was food poisoning. Yeah. Roger uh, Roberts was what? There was vodka poisoning. There you go. Yeah. Vodka so. <laughs> poisoning. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah, so everybody's kind of getting with it now. You're relaxing a little bit. No, yeah. I'm sitting here sweating. You have sweating. a calming presence. Are you Are you going to throw up? No, no, I'll try okay. not to. But if I do, I'll, I'll go in Robert's direction. How's yeah, that? Turn Thank your head you so that much. way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, what's up with stress? We're living in a chaotic world, a lot of things going on. People are more stressed than ever before. And it's, you know, it's, here's the thing with stress it's a physical response to circumstances and events and even our own thoughts that create an imbalance in our bodies. And this can a lot of times be not good, but sometimes it's good. You know, there's good stress that helps us focus more, increases our alertness, it can save our life even. So, but it's the chronic stress that we're looking at. And this can be harmful to our health on many levels. It goes in many deep areas of our bodies, of our lives, and it can decrease the quality of our lives as well, overall. So, I mean, like even this morning, you're not feeling well, and it's, you know, can affect the whole yes. energy, right? A little hangover, Robert? No, no, feel great, super. Oh, okay. <laughs> Couple of Advil, I'm doing good. And another yeah. drink this morning. Um, right? No, I'm just trying to relate to my partner. Oh, empathize oh my isn't that sweet? gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, so there's different types of stress, though. You can right. have mental stress, yeah. and you can have emotional stress and physical stress. Mm -hmm. And in the mental stress, it's chronic worrying. It's fear. It's anxiety. It's um, negative thinking, even. People who are just negative, you know, the kind of Debbie Downers in life. But that fear, you know, in life right now, there's so much fear going on. We're fear, uh, afraid of the sun, the water, plastic in our bottles. We're afraid of the foods we eat. We're afraid to eat bread. We're afraid of, ter you know, so many things. And it's just taking this. And then when you have the physical body, if you're in pain, that can throw everything off. It can throw off how you think. You cannot relax. And then the emotional thing, you may have had suffered a loss. You know, there could be things going on financially, you know, that are happening. All of these interplay with one another. And we're living in a time, too, when we have a huge amount of our society on antidepressants, anti-anxiety medicines, sleep medicines. So they need something to wake up. They need something to go to sleep. They need something to keep them chill. And, you know, this is not that some people don't honestly need help, but this help is becoming chronic and addictive. And we're not... We're not honoring our own nervous system. It's destroying our nervous system. So we know that stress can be the precursor to many disorders and many diseases. But then how do you manage this? What are some good ways to manage the stress? I was about to ask you that. Right. So how do you? We're going to laugh more. Laughing, not taking things so seriously. You know, what's that? <laughs> Look at that laugh. <laughs> like that, right? Just like that. Can you do a fake laugh, Just like Robert? That. <laughs> can you do a fake laugh, Jill? No, I actually yeah, try, can't. Try it. <laughs> Come on, you let it I go a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
like that laughing yoga. I can't. Like, yeah, exactly. I, the there I don't know what that was. Yeah, it was like evil. To kill a puppy or something. Like that I think so. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, there's okay. another line. Yeah, so then we can look at. Um, I like to say taking time out to take time in. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if I created that, but if I yeah. did, I'm a genius. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, there may be, even like with Max, there may be some apps. There are some apps. You can test your blood pressure. You put your finger over yeah. the camera. Um, meditation, massage, aromatherapy, taking a hot bath, walking meditation, yoga, exercise, um, disconnecting. This is a big one. Take time. Just turn off your phones. Disconnect from social media. People are stressing out. That social media, oh, my God, they're online comparing themselves. Right. And we have this whole thing where reality shows now are really glamorizing people behaving badly you well, know that's true. it's yeah. like not a good thing so we're seeing that and and you know progressive relaxation and i'd like to do how about this a little example of breath work okay you guys in yep let's robert do it. You in no, no, yes no, no. yeah that was hyperventilating oh, sorry. so so you're just going to put your hands on your belly robert robert behave and close your eyes and put that phone down oh my <laughs> god let him do it. Okay, so you're just going to close your eyes, put your hand on your belly, and I want you just to watch your breathing now. Just watching the inhale, and that's what happens. Now you're de-stressed. So about breath work, just really connecting. And then Robert, waking up. Ooh. Good morning. Wow, hi. Yeah, hi. So, you know, all these types of things, just, you know, having a good support of friends. Cool. Yeah. I like that. You good? Very so that's nice. it. Sorry, I was, you guys? I, I was getting hot over here. <laughs> he was. You were stressing I had food out. Poisoning, and I thought I'd open up the door, but the camera guys are yelling at me. So I guess that's a no-no from no, what no. I'm hearing. Yes, no. got you. Okay. No. Now, now we're all stressed again. Let's breathe. Know, Let's sorry. breathe. Breathe, breathe together. Just Woo. breathe. Uh, so there you go. That's that's you know that's a step in that direction. In other shows, we're going to get into some deeper avenues good. of this. Wonderful. Yeah. Sorry about the interruption. No there. worries. Just, uh, Would like eating chia pets help? Not the chia pet necessarily. That could be bad. The seeds. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Jill, thank you thank so you much. Thank you so Very much. You guys have a great you. day. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Enjoy your yoga lesson. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to do a special feature called Behind the Song. A little background on a song that many of you might know is Scrambled Eggs. According to Paul McCartney, I really reckon that yesterday was probably the best song I ever wrote. That's probably one of the most humble statements I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, it holds the record as being the most recorded song in history with over 2,500 versions and known airplay exceeds seven million times in the U.S. alone. Wow. The song was actually written at 57 Wimpole Street in London while he was staying at the home of his girlfriend. According to Paul, I woke up with a lovely tune in my head, and I thought I ought to go play it. So I went right to the piano and banged out the chords. But he didn't know where it came from. He said he heard it in a dream. He was afraid he couldn't remember the medley, so he came up with the words, scrambled eggs, oh my baby, how I love your legs. <laughs> Those were the original words to yesterday. And for months upon months, he went around driving all of the members of the Beatles crazy, banging that on a piano and singing scrambled eggs, scrambled eggs, because he could never figure out what to do. Scrambled eggs. Exactly. So he finally turned to the tune of Yesterday. And when he composed it, he felt a little embarrassed. He said, because we're a rock and roll band, and I didn't think we should be playing music like this. Your British accent, by the way. It's horrible. Yeah. So he sat on the song for actually two albums before ever bringing it to anyone's attention or trying to record it. Wow. So finally he came around, and he thought that maybe he had heard it somewhere and he had stolen it. So then he spent months playing the song for everyone he met. And everyone said, it's lovely, but I've never heard it before. <laughs> Thank you. So finally he decided to go ahead and write the words to it on a trip, and on June 14, 1965, he walked into the EMI studios, sat down, and recorded only two tracks of yesterday. The first one, he screwed up the lyrics, he screwed up the verse, they told him to get his act together, he played it the second time, and on the second cut, that's the song yesterday that we know to this day. Huh. The interesting thing is when he was done, he turned to his fellow bandmates and said, now you guys chip in. Ringo said, I can't put drums on top of that, mate. <laughs> and George and John said, what's the point of adding guitar to that? There would be no point at all. Right. So it was the great Sir George Martin who said, I have an idea. Why don't we add some strings? McCartney was adverse to strings. He hated it. He said, I don't want to sound like Monteverde. So he went out and he convinced him to try a quartet. Huh. And they came in two days later and in only two hours recorded that amazing cello and violin soundtrack that goes on the back of it. They added only one more overdub for Paul McCartney to sing yesterday on top of his other voice, and on June 18th, they had their first mix of the song. 
probably one of the most famous and most beautiful songs ever. It was released on September 13th by Capitol Records, and it immediately went to number one and sold over a million copies. As you may know, one of the odd things about it is that Lennon and McCartney, when they were young, had an agreement that every song they ever did would be called Lennon and McCartney, regardless of who wrote it or who took the lead. Well, many years after the band broke up, Paul became upset that this was not his legacy song. So he went to that wonderful woman that all of the Beatles loved, the wonderful, happy, cheery Yoko Ono. Right. And he said, could you do me a personal favor? On this one song. I don't even want to take his name off. Can we just say it's written by McCartney and Lennon? You can imagine what she said. I can't repeat it on the air. No. She said no. To yeah. this day, he is pissed off at her, and yeah. the feud continues. Indeed, because his name was first, Lennon's, she actually made more money off the song than really? he did. That's interesting. One That's of the good. most amazing songs, one of the most greatest injustices for being credit, but probably my favorite song of all time. Let's take a listen to it. We'll listen through it all the way through. And this will be track number two. Remember, he only recorded it twice. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. We handle everything from general corporate formation, partnership, real estate. We have a full service litigation practice, and we also have a group of lawyers that handle bankruptcy and general insolvency matters. We offer big firm experience with a small firm feel. The person that you're hiring is the person who's going to be representing you throughout your entire map. The slogan of redefining full service attempts to capture two things. One, an explanation of the breadth or the diversity of the legal services that we provide but also to recognize that our service to our community does not end with our legal services. Whether it's a pro bono opportunity where we're representing people for free, or whether we're actually volunteering on a project like Habitat for Humanity, for example. It includes the philanthropic efforts, the volunteering of time, and the donating of resources outside just the four corners of this law. So, Robert, our musical guest. I'm so honored to see this. This is Greg. April Johnson, who, of course, works here with us on Radio Caravan. And I've had the pleasure of hearing April play before. But, Robert, you haven't. I've never had the pleasure. You, you don't know anything about her or anything about her musical skills. None of this. This is a wonderful treat. Yeah. It's like Christmas in May. Yeah. And so we decided to bring her in to let you listen to her talents. And April, good morning, by the way. Good morning. And uh, you want to tell us who you're with uh, in here in the studio today? Who am I with? Crew. Well, I've got my parents here from Minnesota oh. or Fargo, North Dakota. Hey, good day, who's there? Be hey. exact. Uh, my you want to give us their names? Out there. Jeff and Kathy. Okay. My boyfriend. Uh, you know, Chick. Camera crew. and Yeah. And you guys. And us. Yeah. yeah. Got a big following. And Jill. And Jill and everybody, yeah, and Max Tech and everybody. everybody. So we, uh, April kind of decided on a song she thought she'd like to bring into the room and sing for you. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, April, whenever you think you're ready, young lady, you just uh, knock it out. And uh, by the way, be when we come back after this, we've got Brendan Hunt, who I have a feeling is going to be a very interesting guest. Ladies and gentlemen, April Johnson. I've had bad dreams too many times. To think that they don't mean much anymore Fine times have gone And left my sad home Friends who once cared Just walk out my door Love has no pride when I call out your name. Love has no pride, there's no one left to blame. I'd give anything to see you again. I've been alone too many nights 
to think that you could come back again I've heard you talk She's crazy to stay But this love hurts me so I don't care what you say Love has no pride When I called out your name Love has no pride There's no one left to blame I'd give anything To see you again If I could buy your love I'd truly try my friend and if I could pray, my prayer would never end. But if you want me, babe, I'll fall down on my knees, asking for you to come back. I'll be pleading for you to come back. Begging for you to come back to me Love has no pride When I call out your name Love has no pride There's no one but myself to blame I'd give anything to see you again Yes, I'd give anything to see you again Woo! <laughs> April Johnson, My everybody. Heavens, what a treat was that. Did you have any idea how well she could uh, sing and play guitar? I had no idea she yeah. had this hidden talent inside oh, of her. Incredible. And that voice, that soulful Bonnie Raitt living inside of her. Yeah, thank extraordinary. you. Extraordinary, extraordinary. Ah! Look at everybody, every guy in the room. We've got a heavy testosterone room today, right? We've got like one, two, three, four, five guys in here, six outside in April, and we're all going, wow, that was incredible, young lady. Made me a little nervous. I think I need some girl power in here. Well, yeah. okay. <laughs> hey, great no, job. thank you. Thanks for having me. Extraordinary. Beautiful. Extraordinary. Thanks for doing that, April. Of course. Hi, I'm David Wilhelm, and this is Jimmy's Famous American Tavern. Jimmy's has been called a casual comeback for me. I think that's because most of the restaurants that I developed in the past were white tablecloth, upper-end restaurants. Jimmy's was designed as a place for friends and families to gather and enjoy regional American comfort food in a casual setting. Jimmy's Famous American Tavern. Simple and traditional. Let's bring in our next guest. Um, I've got to open the door and work the mics and try not to pass out at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, April. Hey, hey applause out in the Got applause out in the other room, no less. Is the production of Absolutely Filthy, an unauthorized Peanuts parody, written by and featuring our next guest, Brendan Hunt, who uh, drove down, I'm not sure where he drove down from, but I think Los Angeles, and we're still trying to figure out what I think Mars, said. I think he, yeah. he's a long way away. I took the 405 from Mars. <laughs> Lovely. How was the traffic? For? Not bad, Rosette, in the morning. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for having me, everybody. The Charles Schultz Peanuts Gang are older and attending a funeral for Charlie Brown. That is correct. Is that the basic premise of the... That, the is, uh, that is indeed the basic premise, except a bit more of the focus goes to a character uh, called, who we call The Mess, but it was based on Pigpen. Um, and Pigpen is kind of who we're following for the story. Uh, and he is as dirty as he ever was as a kid, but now he's an adult, and he's still dirty, and he's so dirty that he's basically a rambling homeless person. Wow. 
And so you play this pig pin type character. I do. Yeah, and what inspired you to write? Be a rambling homeless person. Because <laughs> there's so many of them anyway. Well, I mean, generally, uh, people uh, don't like when I talk. So that kind of just clued me right into it. Also, I'll eat garbage. Um, no, the, uh, the original uh, inspiration came at Burning Man. I was at the Burning Man uh, Festival. And, uh, that explains a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's explained most of uh, society. <laughs> and uh, I'm out dancing uh, this one morning with a bunch of my friends, and you know, dirt is kicking up all Are around me naked? everywhere. Because you should be really naked. Not only you. was I not naked, I was wearing so many clothes that I nearly suffered heat stroke. Wow. I, I don't tend to do Burning Man correctly. Uh, so... <laughs> I'm out there dancing and kicking up dirt, and like while I'm dancing, uh, I remembered a, a random Facebook post that a guy uh, from my Burning Man camp had posted that was a picture of a typical like pig pen drawing t-shirt thing, yep. uh, and he added, oh, now I get it, Pe uh, pig pen from Peanuts was a burner. And while I'm out there dancing, <laughs> kicking up dirt around me, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, and this kind of this story came to me. Um, and it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been really fun to do for about a year and a half now, off and on. Well, Amazing. Were you there the year, by the way, when the, the guy lit Burning Man on fire a day early and they beat the crap out of that guy? Uh, I was not. I believe he did it like four days early. Yeah, but uh, I, I found that funny. It's a tribute to anarchy, and the perfect anarchist response is to light Burning yeah. Man early, and they just literally and then, beat whoa, the crap whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to need our anarchy to be on schedule, <laughs> exactly. my friend. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, so once you kind of came up with this idea at Burning Man while you were dancing, Fully near, clothed. Yeah, fully, fully clothed, clothed near near heat stroke. Yep. You had to go back and do what? Write the script, or did you uh, take this to your group up in LA? How'd that process uh, work? Yeah, I basically I left Burning Man uh, uh, like the next morning, yeah. um, like and, and drive along. Like I got I got this idea for a story, and so a uh, first uh, it was just a ten minute little scene. There's a there's a theater who we where we first performed this in LA called Serial Killers. Uh, excuse me, it's called uh, Sacred Fools. Uh, Sacred Fools Theater Company, and they do a show called Serial Killers where five sort of ten-minute episodes of a story, of different stories, go up, and the audience votes which three will come back the next week, and the other two serials are killed. Oh, um, I got you. And, uh, and they kept voting us back, and we, got, we came back enough times that we were able to tell a whole story, and then the theater asked that I submit that for their main stage season, and we ended up doing it as a full-length play about a year later. Pigpen is now homeless. He walks around on stage hula-hooping while naked. Do I have that right? Uh, I mean, not the whole time. But the, with the naked, we save the naked for special times, but yeah, oh, there, there, yeah there's some wang. So, uh, <laughs> is there Wang Chung serious? tonight? I mean, are, is <laughs> Everyone's there frontal, having fun. Is there frontal, frontal nudity in this uh, performance? Uh, it, is a, it is a show for mature audiences only, and yes, again, mm. Wang. And we don't have a choice, it's you, we don't get a pick? It's yeah, you know, <laughs> when my dad came and saw it, and uh, oh boy. My, my dad's main comment afterwards was, because, you know, yeah, I, I get briefly and hilariously naked in it, and uh, no one else does, and my dad's only... You generally don't want me. people laughing when you get naked, <laughs> I found. It's very humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> There's really no other possible reaction. Okay. Um, my dad's only note for me after the show was, you know, as the playwright, you can have women get naked. <laughs> like, oh, sorry, Dad. Didn't. But why naked and why a hula hoop? I don't get the connection there uh, with, the, with this particular character. Well, the naked Peter. would be a bit of a spoiler alert, but suffice to oh, say, okay. he's having a particularly horrible day, gotcha. and it, it only it only gets worse. The hula hooping is it was part of the whole, you know, Desert vision that uh, that that I had, but um, desert you're vision. not spinning the hula hoop as I fear, are you, on stage? Um, like like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like way. that, like with uh, centrifugal laying yeah, exactly. situation. Yes, yes, no, yes, no, okay. uh, that I hula funny. hoop. That would that would, I would come to see. That would be I, impressive. I had learned to hula hoop a little while earlier before this Burning Man thing. Just kind of you know, I decided like that was a skill that I should have because it looked fun. And um, as I'm trying to think of how I would play. Pigpen, like, well, what's Pigpen about? Pigpen is about this dust cloud, and this dust cloud is ever present, and it's always kinetic. So, what's the thing that could have? And basically, right away, it's like, oh, uh, a hula hoop, but not a fabulous disco glowing shiny hula hoop, but it's a brown and black hula hoop nice. that would be f always there and kinetic, and the audience would forget about it, but it would, you know, be ever present. <laughs> Lucy is Daddy a TV. Daddy Johnny's in the bathtub again. <laughs> Lucy is a TV sports interviewer. Schroeder went from playing Beethoven to becoming a shallow pop star, and Snoopy died a long time ago. No. But, it, but he returns as a German-speaking female dog as a hallucination inside Pigpen's head. How am I doing? Uh, good, except, except it's in Charlie Brown's sort of uh, death fever dream is where he sees okay. Snoopy. Oh, okay, excellent, yeah. yeah. Um, and so this group you're part of, Sacred... Sacred Fools. Fools. Can you describe a little bit about how that process works? 
Because that's the creative process you go through to develop these sorts of skits or plays, right? Yeah, well, I mean, this is a one-shot deal in a way. Like, I haven't really worked this process for any other thing. But in oh, terms oh, oh. of what Sacred Fools is, Sacred Fools, they have this serial killer thing, which is late night shows on Saturdays, which is it's, it's really kind of a, like, mostly comedy, sometimes musical, little Thunderdome of shows. Um, but Sacred Fools itself, like, they are very much the bad news bears of Los Angeles theater. Like, they, they do pretty well. They've been recognized with, with, with awards and things. Um, but that thing is held together by surface tension and gum. <laughs> uh, but it's a great place to, to work, and I really am glad I'm, I'm, yeah. I've had the chance to perform there. Two so. actors walk in and one actor walks out, <laughs> playing your homage to Thunderdome. Yeah, and the one who walked out wins wow. somehow. It's so is it, is it all revolving around your script? Uh, this particular play? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it always revolved around a script, or is there sometimes there's more of a No, this, has been, this is a scripted approach. show. I, I've... I've I've got kind of an improv background, but this is a fully scripted piece. Got you. Uh, it's been described, Absolute Filthy has been described as a dark and dirty comedy. I guess what's so dark and what's so dirty about the show? Uh, well, the dark, I mean, it's, it's, it's a dark comedy. It's, I mean, it's a homeless guy who comes to a funeral, and we try to get laughs out of it. Um, so it, it's, it's in the proper tradition of dark comedy. And the dirty part, I mean, he's homeless. I am basically caked with makeup from head to toe. Like, after the show... You know, family members will come by and like want to hang out, and like I need to, I need to give myself what they call the whore's bath because there's no showers at Sacred Fools, <laughs> and I got to take baby wipes, and just baby wipe, wipe myself for like 20 minutes before I'm presentable at all. Wow. Uh, so it's it's proper dirty. <laughs> wow. Did you ever just try walking through a car wash or something? Man, there there have been nights where I would gladly have done so. <laughs> give me the full wax. Maybe a little carnauba wax to shine up that body a little You've bit. done this before. Uh, many times, You're actually. slightly too familiar with I'm the process. I'm just throwing some <laughs> ideas out there for you. Uh, is there any sort of character arc in this performance? Is there any sort of, sort of you know... Uh, I, I mean, uh, the spoilers. Uh, hey, man, he's just he's 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 sure messed up in the beginning, and maybe this is the day that uh, things work out, and he he learns a lesson and, and straightens things out. All right. Or maybe, or maybe he he can't get out of what what he is. Beautiful. I love that. If there are any of the usual SCR folks listening out there, you're saying, what the heck is this doing at SCR? Well, SCR a couple of years ago started a very innovative theater in the uh, Nicholas Theater and brought in a bunch of playwrights and people from all over the country. It reminds me of the Red Cat Theater up in L.A. I think it's got that same kind of genre and vibe to it. So it's a wholly different thing. It's a little more creative, a little more off the wall. It's an uh, SCR, it uh, SCR Studio Series. It is indeed. They want us to call it um, to distinguish from the actual big room. Uh, they, they don't let me in the big room. We've only been <laughs> in the little one. No, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it rhymes with Wang. It has to do with that term you do on the parking meters, I believe. <laughs> Our patrons are very specific about liking their chairs. Please. Yeah, but some of them are adventurous. Come yeah. on. Okay. Come on, you people. Get out there. <laughs> You've been listening to Radio Caravan on KX93.5, Laguna's only FM station. I'm Scott Hayes and... Robert Palmer. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your life. Thanks for coming in, Brendan.